it's with great pleasure um, that I will have to introduce the second speaker uh, on a topic of uh, Sudan healthcare development and social uh, contract. Uh, a professor of surgery, Abdurrahman um, Ahmed Omar, a graduate of the University of Khartoum, who is also a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons and a fellow of the Academy uh, of the American College of Surgeons as well, who has done an MSc and a PhD in surgery and now currently works as a professor of surgery in Vancouver. He's an expert in uh, medical management and social development, and he had some of his training in UCL in, in the United Kingdom. So thank you very much, Professor, for, for your attendance today. Thank you very much. Uh, to start with, I would like to thank Mr. Chairman and the panel, as well as our, our colleagues attending. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I mean, I've, I've chosen a topic that seems to be uh, relevant to the whole theme that we're going through because healthcare is an important cornerstone in any developing country and in the development and sustaining it. Uh, from our, our, our main like, uh, grounds built about people, people who develop things, not the country is going to develop it without its people. So a healthy population will lead to a healthy economy, to a healthy uh, development. Uh, I've chosen the social contract because uh, if we go back to give a background about the social contract and, uh, and how it's affecting health nowadays, uh, social contract theory says that people live together in a society in accordance with an agreement that established moral and political rules of behavior. This has been going on since man was created and society is built. The social contract itself is a political philosophy an actual or hypothetical contract or agreement between ruled and the rulers, defining the rights and duties of each. Any group of people in a society choose to have rulers or leaders and followers. There is a sort of an agreement that's not written. We call it the social contract, but it's an agreement that we have duties to do and you have duties to do as well. And each side have rights. So in the society, we work hard, we pay taxes, we do our dues, we live honorably, but also those we choose to rule us, they have to provide care for us, protection and sustainability. Nowadays, this used to be between just the governor in the, the power and the people. But now every part of the areas of service start to have a part in that. And the first one actually to be realized is healthcare and the social contract. It is in transition. It requires an understanding of the purpose of healthcare for individuals and society. It includes speculating limitations of individual rights and state responsibilities. Every citizen everywhere in the world deserves to receive a good healthcare by the state. And this is known everywhere. This is why we have different uh, systems that serve this purpose. So healthcare providers are similar to social in the social contract at the law enforcement, which is the government, to provide effective, timely service to individuals and create equitable system that safeguard the health and the society. If you go down there, the current Sudanese health system carries bias or believed to carry bias, okay, and some standard services of many sectors. We describe them uh, by location, ethnicity, socioeconomical class, and those identified as minorities and marginalized groups. This is a belief among people, like why people in Khartoum get better care than people in Port Sudan, Kassala, Fasher, Niala, Kadugli. So uh, this is a bit of uh, create a sense of injustice while it is a right to receive the utmost care you can get as a citizen of a state. So now we have Sudanese renewed social contract, which force change in healthcare as well the movement from the previous state situation, or the Ingaz, to the new era, this is renewing our social contract. And part of that is to renew our contract with the health services and people who supply it. So during the recent times, people lost a bit of faith and trust in the health system. We can see that. Because it started to be politicized, it started to be corrupt, 
There is a lot of talk about incompetence. People are running away from the services here where we used to have some of the best doctors, nursing and health visitors uh, around the area in North Africa and the third world. But people now don't have trust. And this is why we end up sometimes spending $1.5 billion in treating people outside, mainly in Jordan. Forget about Egypt, Europe, and other places. So the recent revolution, which can be called uprising as well, slogan, which is Hurriya Salam Adala, raised clear a cohesive political demands for the political contract and healthcare new contract as part of that. Should be part of the whole demand and people should have equal care as a right, not as something to be given when needed. We have to urge the state to adopt policies towards inclusive healthcare growth and improvement that would be a cornerstone and in investment in the country because investing in its people. And the human capital is very important everywhere and especially in Sudan during the coming few years. Uh, what expects from each other? This social contract, we just like went over it a little bit, but the society, what do they expect from the medical profession? They expect for them to be competent, honest, leaders, accountable, transparent, and they have to serve them with all the abilities they can do in a clear picture, without doubts. And they have to promote good public health and good publicity to the profession. And what do the doctors on the other side of the healthcare workers expect? They expect their society to trust them. Also, they have to be autonomous. They work without any influences from our side, neither political nor social. They have to be self-regulating, sort of independence. And the healthcare system have adequately to be funded adequately. And I mean adequately, not to the maximum, the minimum possible rather than the maximum needed. And the role in public policy, they have to play a role in that, which they do already, but they start to politicize it more than being a professional only in the medical field. And patients have to accept responsibility of the health, and this comes through public health, community medicine, and education. And rewards. People working in the health profession need to be rewarded as well. Most of the time it's non-financial. They like to be respected, they like to say like, they have their own position in the area. And that gives them a status. And also financial. And there's a long saying, when I went to medical school and graduated, my father said to me one thing. He said to me like, uh, do you want money? And I said, everybody wants money. He said, leave medicine. Come and work with me. You'll make money. But he said, no, I want to be a doctor. He said, okay, if you want to be a doctor, you never make money. Just remember one thing, you're going to be comfortable and respected, but no money. And that's the way forward. And every time I've seen some of my colleagues who told me like, why are you doing this? Why are you all over the world? Come back to Sudan. And one of them claimed that he makes $70,000 a month, something I've never dreamt of. So that's not medicine, something wrong. And we have to correct these ideas in the coming few years. We come down to who should get involved uh, as an advocate of the people. The unions, we have the medical doctors, the nursing uh, unions, medical technicians, healthcare workers, and students. Students are the future, we have to focus a lot on them. Civil organizations, we have a lot of people now start to cover the gaps that the social contract between the health and the state did not work, like Majmu'at al-Hawadis. They're doing their best, they're covering a gap. This is a right, this is not supposed to be a charity work. This is what's supposed to be the responsibility of the state, and the people should demand it. And we have to remember the political parties and uh, politicians. These are very powerful speakers. These are people who can reach people, and they're leaders. We want them to promote health and health services without any political gain, because that is a right, and not try to sell it just to get elected. Social influences, what Galiba and other people like that, they talk every day, on, 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 the, on the cyberspace, and they have, we have to use them also to influence part of the health care and the people to know their rights and what they receive. Socioeconomical studies, we have a lot of economists around, they have to find a way to figure out a way for us to manage the resources we have to the best we can. 
and religious authorities. These are very powerful people, especially in certain areas, like uh, female genital, uh, genital mutilation. These are teachings that are supposed to be going all over the place, and uh, definitely the religious leaders will play a big role in that. And educationalists, whether from teachers to university lecturers. So, uh, leaders of the future. We have to incorporate uh, healthcare social contract as part of medical school and healthcare related studies curriculum. Long time ago, in a normal school, we used to have something, small booklet called, uh, used to be called Terbi uh, Otania. And I remember I'm a bit old guy, and I hope that there's a lot of people here. When we think about Hurriya, Ashtarakiya, Sudan, Muslim, Libya, that's all the things. We have to change this. We have to change to something to what the Sudanese people wanted and called for recently. And part of it is health, and health and how we can sustain it. We have to look at young healthcare providers and training reforms. My, our lady here just a minute ago was talking about that. We have to empower them to learn. We have to give them the facilities, the training, opening their eyes to the world and learning from it. Training rotations that involves a, a holistic exposure to different parts of the country. Not everybody's going to work Jamal Khartoum. You're just going to be working in Khartoum. You have to go out. It's going to be part of your education. In the summer holidays, you have to spend two weeks in Agafla. Go outside. Visit different parts of Sudan. Feel the presence of people. Feel the, re the real rhythm and, li and lifestyle and health needs. And come back again and pass it to the next generation. Introduction of governance and its practice. Governance is a, a word that now a lot of people use, but do they practice it? No. I haven't seen a single audit that's come, say, an audit that comes out from any health institute in Sudan in the last few years. And even if you ask them what the difference between research and audit, nobody gives you an answer. This is a research paper, it's not an audit, or this is, a, call it an audit, actually it's a research. So they just mix and match. We need this to be educated. We need this to be practiced. Leadership training. Again, this should be part of the curriculum. Workshops for the young doctors. Promotion should be related to it. If you pass some leadership courses, then you can be promoted. Otherwise, no. And this is the trend now worldwide. So self-regulation and, and governance, uh, the profession uh, to make professional duty for the healthcare workers and uh, practice uh, and, and elements of clinical governance, as I said, and we have to create and, and empower professional bodies, not related to Wazir al-Saha directly, and not appointed by Wazir al-Saha or the Hukuma. Okay, this is a professional body have to manage the doctors, their affairs, and their links, and judge them, and put down their priorities about how to serve the society and listen to the society and know what they expect from the healthcare professionals. And separation of the role of the unions. We know that we have a doctor's union. Now it seems to be like uh, part of just political branch and nothing else. This has to go back to be a union rather than a political movement. And professional regulated bodies and, ex and the executive government. We have to, these are three areas that we have to integrate them together and work without imposing each other ideas on each other, but to benefit from each other and work for prosperity. We have to address healthcare provision as a constitutional right to all Sudanese that's protected by constitutional laws. Society and healthcare. Uh, we, have, they have the, we have to be working on building the trust between the society and the healthcare in institutes again. This through promotion through going out, reaching out to them, working with people, cleaning the area, the streets, teaching, having evening lessons for young ladies, pregnant ladies, children, and so on and so forth, visiting schools. Rebuilding the community medical services, occupational health, laws, and its implementation, the school health program. All these things are demolished almost in Sudan, and we have to bring them back, because make people, this is their right also make them aware about the importance of health care. Free provision of mother and child health care programs, maternity, vaccination, nutritional care, focus on preventive health care services, and fighting bad health habits. Involving the community leaders and health educational activities and patient empowerment, which is most important thing, that the patient know their rights and they know what to do and they're responsible about the health care 
as healthcare professionals is a bridge between you and the state providing what the state wants to give you and protecting your rights in front of the state. The health of the nation is a cornerstone in building its future. You can see here, nobody can make you better, nobody can improve you, but you have to improve yourself. This was so important message. It's a short one because we are limited for time, and thank you very much. بنحلم بفضاء أوسع بنحلم بزمن أجمل بلاد ملا بلاد ملا